I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Is she going on the radio here? We have to stop talking about your car? <laughs> yeah. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. All right. Donna D'Erico and Nikki Six are going to be in here, theoretically, very soon. Donna, you know, from uh, Baywatch and, of course, uh, Baywatch. Oh, yes. BattleBots. Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, yeah. BattleBots. I love that BattleBots. I forgot she was on that. Mm-hmm. They always stick chicks on BattleBots, and you can always tell they just have absolutely zero interest in it. But they have to act like they're interested in it. So uh, they interview the guys after the uh, after the match. Yeah, it'll be like uh, Ziggo against Vlad the Impaler, but the <laughs> chicks aren't interested at all. So they go, uh, um, Vlad, you had a tough battle against uh, the other guy, the other one. <laughs> Yeah, and then they go, yeah, I did, Donna. And they go, okay, ah, back to you. They're just, they, they've, I, I don't blame them. It, it would be as if uh, they stuck me because they needed some hot male ass um, um, at the on end some of the, home decorating channel. At the end of the runway at the Paris uh, fashion event? No, yeah, it's if, as if there was a show that was geared I- exclusively for women. Yeah. Had to do with cuticles yeah, and, you and did, nails. You were doing the interviews. And they, someone said they needed a dude there. Well, that's a man show a bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they've they've never they've never uh, they've never had what Carmen Electra does it now I think yeah. or did they get rid of her? The point the is last I saw she was doing they've it. never been interested yeah. and they've never cared and, and rightfully so, but they just can't even pretend. Maybe they're not paying them enough to pretend. So anyway, uh, Don will be in here and uh, always good to see uh, Donna Dierico and uh, Nikki Six as well. Just here they are. Hey. Well, Hi. speak Hello. of the devils. I uh, I believe I was gonna say I was gonna. Sometimes I try to jar my brain into uh, getting an answer correct. Yeah. So I go. I believe the last time we saw you and my brain, I'm going. Stop. Come on, spit something good out. But I don't know when it was. Two. It's been a while, right? Years? It's been yeah. It's been a couple of years. Yeah. Yes, they're a a a, a lovely couple. Donna, I had uh, was in here uh, years ago. Was. Uh, Doing some drinking and doing some partying, and then uh, cleaned herself up and uh, became a, a good mama, right? Yes. Yes. I and was a good mom then too, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think you were a mom then. Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. You were? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Did you? Ha- do you have a couple of kids? I have two now that I've had, and then, uh, but we have five all together. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Oh. Five all out of you? No, two, two. out of me. The uh, last one was you. last year. She's fifteen months now. Mm. And um, I had one before. Nikki had three before. Yeah. Wow. She and got now, me fixed. Yeah, he's neutered, so there's no Nice. More. I'm loving it. How was that? Was that painful? It sucked, dude. You know, the, I think you were oh. talking about that Stupid last question, time we though, were right? here. You were asking a lot of questions about that. But, yeah. Uh, I, you know. Yeah, that's right. You were. It's been on my mind. Yeah, Drew uh, and everyone always <laughs> says it's, it, it's painful, but it's worth it for the first time, you know, when you make your comeback. So to speak. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. is that true? Or get well, it back, as it were. It's kind of degrading. Yeah, you the, know the whole experience. Well, I mean, you mean, like I got laid out there, mm-hmm. draped, draped. You've done it? No, I've oh. been involved in it. Okay, I've been, yeah. I've been on the on the uh, handle on the, end of the, on night, the handling. So. Okay, yeah. You get draped, and then uh, you know you're thinking you're going to get some kind of star treatment here, right? And right. Nurse Ratchet walks in. She looks at looks down at your your whatever it is, and just goes, "Yeah, looks like you're ready." And you're thinking, you know, she has something else to say, like, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, you know? And then comes that big, long needle, and that's the part that's... the big. You get the big, long needle in the, uh, in yep. the scrotum, in yep. the abdomen. Where do you get it? Scrotum. Right in the scrotum? Really? All through that area. Do they, uh, do they have to shave things for this? <laughs> do they shave it? I, I, was, I was already shaved. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, smooth. See? <laughs> I knew it would pay dividends one day. <laughs> but they pretty much shave your crotch for everything, right? You go yeah, for like when, a when Botox you, injection for your eyes and they shave your nuts, Remember when you had right? that hand surgery? 
Shave the nuts. Yeah. What? No. But they did take my underpants, which I uh, still object to, by the way. Oh. <laughs> All I, right. I had to come from across the street to settle the crowd down. Well, I told him, look, you're doing, you're doing hand surgery on me. I'm sprawled out. They, they actually strap your arm to a, a six-foot sandwich board because they don't... They, in a That's sort of, like, Jesus, when, uh, like in, when you have a C-section. They do that with both They strap both your arms? arms yeah. yeah, it's like, so if you go, you go like Jesus went. And I thought, and they're like, we're going to need your underpants. And I'm like, could my balls get any further <laughs> away from the action? Please, let me have my dignity. It's important that we have your underpants. I was like, how crucial is it to this procedure that you guys confiscate my underpants? You know, they're on yeah. eBay now. And now now there's, there's, a, there's a crowd gathering now, right? And he's yelling at everybody. You know, to, to Why ask, do you guys need you know, my underpants? Opinions from the security guard, other patients in the waiting room. Really, should I be giving my underpants up? Then they call me, page me across the I street told to come them, over they, there. You know what they said? They said there's a elastic in your underpants and they could catch on fire with some sort of what? static shock thing. I said, you know what? <laughs> I said, I, I know I you got played. Dude. That's a beautiful line of BS. Show me the waiver and I'll sign it and I'll take my chances. And one in, in the cabillion <laughs> chance my nuts catch on fire from static shock. Well, look, I'd love I'd give them the underpants if they didn't give you the robe that ties in back. You're sedated. You got a cast on your hand. It's it, one of those bad smock things that tie in back. That's you can never get it right, and you just walk around with your ass hanging, hanging out. out. And it kind of feels good, but it kind of feels bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in Adam's and case. And you didn't have the benefit yeah. of the underpants on. No, yeah. no. In my case, it's uh, bad it's for everybody. Bad. It's a bad everybody thing. in there. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of hair on my ass. Oh, boy. It's <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Oh, yeah. Donna, to think about that. Donna, what are we plugging tonight here, baby? <laughs> oh, um, well, JVC. Mm -hmm. has uh, joined up with Urban Decay Makeup mm -hmm. Cosmetics. Yes. To make a uh, the first line of car stereos that are geared towards women. And how does that work? What what would make it different? Well, uh they're colored. The 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 two that are out now are in two of the Urban Decay eyeshadow colors. It's like a purple oh, really? and a green. Hmm. They're not like a fuzzy pink thing or anything frou frou, but they're right. they're they're a little softer. They have color. And um, they the knob the knobs on there are boobs. Like, no, no, they're not no the actual yeah the volume control oh, would be uh, like that would be for lesbians. Yeah, <laughs> it's for like if you have long nails, you just, it's not it's you know it's easy to use. There's a little tiny remote control. Really, there's, there's hair around the cassette slot. <laughs> No hair, no. no. Cassettes, no. come on. What year is this? But it's like, you know... <laughs> CD wouldn't have worked right for the joke, I don't it think. It wouldn't have. Yeah, it's I'm sorry. You know Go what? Ahead. Basically, it's like uh, in electronic stores, mm -hmm. I think when women have always been kind of out of place. Yeah. You know, I, think you, I think you rarely see a woman go into a, a car stereo shop, so, you know, shopping for a car stereo. Because yeah. they all... There's a wall of just black-faced car stereo units that all look identical to me. Yeah, they got that Israeli guy who works there who wants to know what's the most you can possibly spend, and you go, uh, Izzy, I can go uh, 250 That's That's as much as I can spend for a, a tape deck. And he goes, oh, that is too bad. We have a beautiful <laughs> unit here. It's only 325 <laughs> Man, that is marked down. But if you want to step up... For the next two days. I have this one at home. I like that one, too. <laughs> it's in my car. Which now I think to myself, wait a minute. At home? I'm a cable TV guy, and you're selling stereos. So that doesn't cut it anymore. I want a better one than you have at home. <laughs> you still live at home with your mom. So this is, uh, this is, this is uh, made for women. And uh, it, it, it doesn't smell like anything, but it's got the coloring. It's got the uh, knobs. It's easy to figure out. It's easy now, to figure and out. And is the volume the knob? Because I, I, that's yeah. what I like. I think, so, I think it's it, marketed it, to women is what JVC yeah. is trying to get it, across. It is as really marketed. To, it is. Mm -hmm. it, remote it's, control. Got a remote. It has a remote yeah. control. Nice. Credit card remote control. And um, like, like Nikki's saying, it's like, you know, it is. It's marketed to women and um so when a woman goes in a car stereo shop she'll see oh these are geared for me instead right. of looking at 50 other units and being treated like she's stupid or you know, like are I you said, lost it's, it's, she's, they still they need a chick in the store selling to chicks that i agree they need good to guys do. I, I agree they do yeah they do i've, I've uh, i haven't yeah. seen that ironically it's good guys it has the uh, has the one chick work in there there are lesbians there all right let's uh take <laughs> ourselves some uh calls you know what the worst is? Let me tell you about the worst in car stereo design. Somebody decided like 11 years ago that the knob was outdated and we needed to have the sort of bar that controlled the volume. 
but you can never quite figure out where you're at with that bar. Like, there is, they, you can't improve on the knob as far as stereo. Like, whenever you ride in a limousine, the stereo is above your head, right. and there's no knob. And you, right. you're pushing buttons up there, but you can't figure out which one is the goddamn That's volume. True. It's like you want it simple. There's yes. the knob. I want knobs. I want the knob to turn it on and off, and then I want it to go up to 10 and then come back down to 1. And that is it. And the one above of your head, the one above the head in the uh, limo has the face that pops off. And I'll always pop the face off and onto my lap two or three times before I find the, power the volume, volume. Yeah, the power. volume or the power. Yeah. Right. Power what is that? I don't know. You've been, different things come up on the screen as you push buttons. Yeah, I mean, Fader, sure, this, is, this has balance. happened to you more than once, right? And here's the other problem, too. It's dark in the limo, and you're almost always loaded. <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it's like... Those things are hard to you, figure you out. Drive, yeah. You can drive, like, from, uh, you can drive from uh, Sherman Oaks to LAX, and you haven't figured out the stereo yet. Mm -hmm. And you get sick, too, right? Go yeah. Look it up like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, sick. you just yeah. want to turn unsafe. it up, and you've yes. changed the channel three times. It should be the color of uh, eye shadow, and it should have a knob. That's and a remote control. And a remote. That's and these right. faces do pop off, too. And it doesn't interfere with your long fingernails. That's right. Thank yes. you. That's right. Aaron? Yeah. You're 18? This, mm -hmm. this What's is up? in honor of Nikki. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. Drew, I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm 18 years old, and when I was born, I was born with undescended testicle. Mm -hmm. Of the, it was a right testicle. Mm -hmm. So when I was six, they tried to pull it down. They just forgot, took it out. Oh well, no, they took it. They pulled it down. They wrapped it in a silicone sack, which I guess back then was like mm. the big thing. So okay. I, they went back into when I was 12, and they were going to pull it down more, but the silicone had disintegrated. Okay. And turned the thing dead. All right. So they took it out and they put a, an FDA approved prosthesis in. All right. Um, they put a large in. So okay. They didn't. They didn't. They shouldn't have. And I got a staph infection. They took it out. Wow. Um, it what, dimpled. What, what? What? How did they shouldn't have put a large we, in? Or they we, shouldn't have put anything in. They well, shouldn't but, have put a large in. This is a lot of complication for a pretty simple and common situation. I got a staph infection. And I was in the hospital for eleven days. Oh my god. Why shouldn't they have put a large in? Because uh, I was twelve. But you can grow in, grow in. And my scrotum was only used grow to one into testicle. In the, in, you know, my scrotum was only used to one but, testicle. But I think the idea is that, know, you, is that you grow into it, so you don't have to replace it as you get older. You know what I mean? Yeah, so but this one just, the, the hole they slipped it into never even closed. Yeah, but th this has more to do with the, the infection. But they should have gone else. with the large. Yeah, let, forget forget that. It got infected and it had a compli Please. unusual complication for simple procedures, so that's fine. Um, and furthermore, um, right now they don't have any FDA-approved prosthesis on the market they're doing a study and it's like I, i'm not i'm not going to name the company that's doing it but it's a silicone prosthesis and i'm trying to figure out you know the packet they gave me didn't quite you know inform me well enough and i don't get to see the doctor as often as i would like to ask mm -hmm. them the question so i'm trying to figure out what kind of complications i mean well there's always concerned about putting silicone inside people's bodies there's always there been, is well there has been this yeah, this controversy right around it but yeah, but they didn't find anything. I, I understand. Bad with I, that. I understand, and that's why it's coming. These things are coming back onto the market. But I've seen like How about a, glass. I've seen like a, <laughs> not glass, but acrylic kind of. What's kind wrong of, with glass? Well, glass breaks. So if I well, can safety them. glass. Hold on yeah. a second. There's sort of that kind of thing out there. Yeah, but, but I, and I've had patients that have those. Well, and what, they're what not. About, like, what is the what is the silicone thing that was put in? That's something a fake testy. Something that felt like a testy. Because it, his, his because his was his was not ascended. His got removed. Well, wait a minute. Oh. Should it have some give? Yeah, it should be. Testy like, has a little give. Yeah, it, they they can manufacture it to feel like a testy, but the the hard ones really are not cosmetically quite right. Well, how much how much feel do you need in your <laughs> actual? Ball? How much how much symmetry do you need in a, something as beautiful as a testy? Anyway, as, yeah. we're not even talking about testy. We're talking about it's a mess down there. Yeah, I, it really is. It's it's. Uh, Donna, it's a horribly ugly part of a male, is it not? Uh, yeah, it is. You, it's you, like it's women just, could do it's without it, right? ABC I, I mean, gum. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but, but having having one is just half the misery, right? It's not. Well, it's I, not, I don't think you want to look different than yeah, other you people. Yeah, want to be symmetrical down there. But on the other hand, they could who's, just who's going to see? You could use one well, of those little Easter eggs. Chicks, I guess. Just, yeah, just you're, take you're, them I both mean, out. It's just the male the ego thing. Oh my God, I only have one ball. Right, right. That's right. What if you have none? Which That'd happens. Be kind of weird. Which then happens. You'd, then you'd be really cool. Yeah, I, I think women would prefer men had none. Yeah, down the porno there. guys have none. <laughs> yeah, what happens to that? Well, why is that? Why is that? No idea. It's an evolution you got, no, thing. No, it's, it's something to do with the with the uh, something stream, is streamlining. Up with that. Something's up with that. Like right before they're gonna, you know, do it. It's like 
Oh, well, that's normal. That's what most people do. They, the cremasteric response pulls them up. Actually, some of them go up actually into the abdomen during all really? that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I, I should be able to train mine to do that. They don't do that. <laughs> Yeah. I try to get them up there. They get Here's stuck in take the down. We need to get a mirror happening. They must keep it really cold in the porn studio. Well, you don't know. I mean, porn studios. Nikki, your your balls may do that as well. They might. I've never sure. seen. I need to get a, one of those mirrors. They do. How do you know? <laughs> Word on the street. We've had children. <laughs> Michelle. Yes. You're 27. Yes. What's up? Well, um, my deal is I just um, got out of a relationship again, and basically, well, it's like this. I'm going to be a bridesmaid again this year for another friend, and I don't understand why is it that everyone else is having long relationships and that lead to marriage and this sort of thing, and I don't. Well, you help us. Tell us what's been happening to you. She sounds like a pain in the ass. How old are you? 27. I'm ready to break up with her already. You're fat. How many (laughs) relationships? Please. What's what's your longest relationship? My longest relationship was two years. And, okay, so you're quite capable of sustained intimacy. And why do they end usually? Um, oh, I, I leave quite a bit. This last time I was left, it was only a three-month relationship. And I haven't actually had a long-term relationship in maybe four years. Well, I, why do I feel completely empty, confused? Like, I can't get anything about what it is that's going on here. Do you choose the wrong guys? Are the relationships dysfunctional or chaotic? Are they unavailable guys? Do you freak out and sabotage these relationships? Do you push guys away? I mean, what what's what's the vibe on these relationships? I... I I think unavailable would be... So you go for unavailable guys? Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat. All right. Well, well, more like guys who um, they they aren't looking for um, something that would lead to marriage. Thus, they and are... I know that, and I think that I stick in there and try and make that. Right, happen. thus they are unavailable in the way you need them to be. Mm-hmm. Right, unavailable guys. How's the rest of your life going? It's going okay. Um, I'm not living in a place that I want to be, but I'm um, planning on moving. And um, <laughs> All right, baby. Listen, don't kill yourself. Well, it's first no of all, big deal. Describe this last guy. What did he do for a living? What happened? What was the relationship like? <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Yeah. He was a musician. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he, That's your well, first he problem. I was yeah. going to say that. Strike one. That's, yeah. uh, don't ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs> he moved out what? <laughs> he moved out of state. Okay. All right. I, I feel empty. I know. I, I feel empty except for I have gas. Other than that, I'm empty. Michelle, mm-hmm. you did, left us all empty. What was your, did your, did Cold your, did, and empty. Do you have anything? I'll, I'll give you a book. I'll leave her alone. I'll Dr- give her a book. Dreams okay. of Love and Fateful Encounters. I'm sorry, what was the title again? Dreams of Love and Fateful Encounters. Okay. Go read that book. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, all right. All right, good times there, baby. All right, yeah. And look, you. listen, all you uh, ladies, get off your high horse and find yourself a nice uh, slob of a man who's desperate. With a pen Plenty of guys out there who uh, are, are very dedicated. Women aren't interested in these guys, unfortunately, for these guys. But there's lots of these guys. And they would love to uh, settle down, start a family, and dedicate themselves to one woman. But women aren't interested in these guys. And you know what? They're not even really bad-looking guys, and there's nothing wrong with them, except for they're a little too, too easy, boring. and they're boring, boring, boring. and they're, they're, they're just... It's the sort of feeling like, look, they're always going to be there. Let's go out and see what we can get. Find and something better. If we can't get anything, we can come back and get these yeah. guys. There's a new, there's a new uh, crop of them coming in every year. <laughs> and women are generally right with that, but you, you can't... <laughs> I mean, those guys are always there. Yeah. But you cannot complain that there are no guys who will settle down or who will be devoted, dedicated, or who will treat you right. They're out there. They're just those guys. They're boring. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Boring. Phoebe? Yeah. You're uh, 18? Yeah. What's up? I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been taking orthotricycline for about mm, two weeks now, Mm -hmm. and um, I've been experiencing some unusual side effects, and I'm not sure if they're side effects from orthotricycline or not. What are they? Um, Like, I've been really dizzy and sweating a lot. I have shortness of breath and, like, nausea spells. I've been having nausea in and out. Any leg swelling? No. Any abdominal pain? Yeah, um, just 
yesterday and today, actually, I've been having, like, sharp stabbing pains in my lower right. Well, you really need to call the doctor to prescribe these things. There are occasionally, and this is, I'm really reaching just because I, I don't know you and I'm just trying to think of any potential serious thing this could be. You can get you know, exacerbation of migraines that can lead to strokes. You can get blood clots in your legs that can cause emboli of the lung or clots in the veins of the, of the uh, abdomen, the intestines. These are real rare things that if some you had some genetic predisposition to this, you could get. So you got to just talk to your doctor about it. Make sure it's just just basic routine kinds of side yeah, effects. Yeah, um, my doctor. Well, the doctor that prescribed the medication. Unfortunately, my uh, medical insurance ran out. So when I called back, they told me that since my medical insurance called back, that I didn't have any reason to talk to him. Well, I think that's unethical and irresponsible because he is still the prescribing physician. Now, you, you may not be able to see him. I understand that, but I think he owes you. A couple minutes. At least talk to a nurse there at the office. Somebody. Get the message to him that you're having these symptoms. What kind of insurance do you have uh, when you're in a band, Nikki? Do you have like, uh, like, Drew, what do we have? Like SAG? After, SAG after? After, yeah. We have, yeah, we have both of those. Yeah, both of those. <coughs> so will you get that if you're in a band? Well, I mean, you have it, Donna, but uh, if you're in a, if you're, let's say you're only in a rock band. Oh, I see. Well, we, we kind of, we get to cover both, like, She's the second on mine. I'm the second on. But if hers. you were just in a rock band, just in a rock band after, after. Oh, really? Well, that's. I think. I think that you got that, not right away. I mean, you got that from appearing on like Leno with, with or things the SAG like that. Thing? After. After. It, it sounds. It sounds so <laughs> not rock and roll. <laughs> we're talking about health <laughs> insurance. <laughs> well, I got my after from from playing at. Uh, I, I in really Detroit think I played night. the Leno show. Yes. and I got my after. I think great. Right, great. Think great dental. <laughs> <laughs> I got eyeglasses and eye exams. It's great. Oh, they have votes and everything coming up, oh, Drew. God. You I ever know. do that? Oh yeah. Do you vote? I do. Why not? You do? I don't know what the hell I'm voting for. I just. <laughs> Oh, really? Vote a couple of things if it makes sense to me. You puss. No, like I that can't w- believe you. Remember actually when they were trying to put after the side together? That made sense to me, yeah. Did they do it? No. Oh. No. Okay. All I know is once in a while I get something in the mail and I go, hey, that was that chick from Little House on the <laughs> yeah, Prairie. Yeah, yeah, I saw and that. I go, that's that uh, Mr. Belvedere dude. <laughs> <laughs> what? He needs my vote for what? <laughs> what is he up to? And then it turns out he's like treasurer or something. Didn't and then she, I get she confused. Won, right? Yeah, she's she won. Yeah, yeah. Mel- Melissa Sue Gilbert, I think, is the uh, president. They should be forced to wear the outfit that we know <laughs> the best. <laughs> in. Like, she should wear like a little she's smock and branded a- for life. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we should force tails. force them to dress in the character that was most popular for them on TV. Oh, then vote. they would get my vote. All right, we'll uh, take ourselves a little break. Nikki Six is here, along with uh, his uh, beautiful wife, Donna DiArico. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Donna DiArico is our guest tonight, and uh, Nikki Six is also here. Donna, you know, from um, BattleBots and... uh, Baywatch. All right, I'm warming up here, and uh, Nikki, of course, you know from Motley Crue, and uh, <laughs> I was uh, doing my uh, strip club uh, DJ impersonation mm. to this song uh, just last night. Okay, yeah. can we hear a little of that? Oh, oh, no, yeah, no, yeah, you don't, oh, no, Donna. Oh, my God. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. Crank it up there. Oh, right. my There's God. A... Yeah, but it was about Brian. It's coming up to stage. Stage five. Brian, show you appreciate it. I can tell you what I have to kill you all time. Stage five. Sharon, stage four. Stage four. Sure. I'm saying the same. Show me appreciate it all. $18 bottles of champagne. with all the mini champagne. You have a lot of lap dances up in the VIP room. We have the executive lunch. Come on up. 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 We have the executive lunch coming up. Uh, uh, Bobby, line of uh, stage one, stage one. Bobby. Come on, 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 come that guy, uh, no, fat a hole in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Please, just a, just just a moment of silence so I can focus on my penis. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a moment silence for me and my penis. No, and by the way, blaring the rock music, plenty. That's enough. 
Yeah. Yeah, we don't need the other. Yeah, you know what you know what it sounds like? It's like <laughs> it's like when you're driving through the canyon and you're listening to a rock song on a rock station, but you're getting like some AM talk bleeding through or some other like KCRW, some some uh some uh, public radio starting, you're hearing a voice where it shouldn't be, and right. you just want to focus on the ass and the rock, and here's this voice. And then once in a while, you got to find the guy. Like, you got to look around. You see what he looks like. Where's that guy? It's always the same guy. This is about 20, 30 pounds overweight, but he doesn't really dress like it. He's got big arms, but a big gut, but he rolls his sleeves up, and he has the goatee and the hair, and he's wearing some funky shades, and he's trying to hip it up, but he's really just a, he's really just a big jackass. But he does, <clears throat> he does get a little uh, sympathy poontang every once in a you while. You think he does? I know, once I know, in I know. a while. Once in a while, here's we, what we happens. We hear from those guys on this show. Here's what time. happens. Uh, some chick's old man, like... Uh, tries to uh, stab her or yeah, something, yeah. you know. Oh, he's there. Yeah, he's, and, he, he's and he, the so shoulder. he offers to drive her home. Mm. And, he, you know, and he's like, hey, my roommate's out of town. <laughs> he's at Havasu. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I got an open room. Hey, it's all cool. And then she's like, hey, man, you're a good friend, Stu. And then when they get home, he, he pulls this one. Some guy gave me some Coke. Hey, it's cool if you don't want to do it, but, you know, this dude just gave it to me. A little ag. Yeah, this is the voice, yeah. though? No, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He doesn't go into the voice. He, that, he goes into the this, this sensitive, I'm trying to get laid voice. And then when he comes into the club, that's, that's when he puts his face on. And then when she wakes up on. next to that guy, yeah. it's all bad. <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah, bad. No, she's, she's long gone. And then, so she splits? Yeah. yeah right but then, then when he sees her again, he's like, hey, I know it was a mistake and you don't want anyone finding out and you're back together with Kurt, okay? And you don't want any of the other girls finding out. And I won't say anything either, but it's going to take a BJ to shut me up. <laughs> so, just, you know. The upstanding yeah, guy. That's, upstanding. that's that guy, yeah. All right, let's uh, get back to the phones and uh, speak to uh, Raj, who's uh, 27. Raj? Yes. What's up? Uh, by the way, I wanted to say, Adam, you're cool, man. I, I'll, I'll see in your show, the man show. Thanks, That's Raj. Funny, Thank you, Raj. Anyway, uh, I have been uh, having a little problem with my uh, fiance. I've been with her for four years. We got engaged two years ago. And uh, I just broke up with her about uh, two weeks ago. And uh, mm -hmm. we just couldn't seem to find any uh, common ground when we had... Uh, any problems uh, I, would, I would ask her to you know help me solve the problems but we just couldn't find any common ground and uh, when I told her that I wanted to break up she told me that she didn't want to and that you know she would do anything and everything to uh, you know work this relationship out and everything yeah. but I I really needed to... Hey, Raj. Uh, sorry to interrupt. What's your question for us? <laughs> I'll let him keep going. He sounds like Lars Ulrich from Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Lars? My question was that should I go back or not? Because uh, I have kept contact with her, but a very minimal contact. I, I, all, I can, I, I, all I hear is that there was lots of problems in the relationship, the nature of which I can't quite decipher. But relationships that have chronic, chronic problems you've tried to solve over and over usually they require more than just a little time apart to make better. Yeah. And uh, so unless you've changed or she's changed in some substantive way, no, I wouldn't go back. Yeah, and you guys have been together for four years. Yes. And it doesn't doesn't seem like it's working out too well. Yeah, that's sort of a no. You gave it a good try. Is this the first breakup you guys have had? Yes, this is the first. I, I was very against breakups. I mean... I, I always try to work with all the problems and, you know... But you always would... All right, all right. I'll listen. I, okay, give her one more shot. All right. Whatever. Okay. All right. <laughs> just to give uh, another opinion? Yeah, I don't right. care. I'm just I'm trying to get it moving. Raj, search your heart. <laughs> People don't really say that enough anymore, do they? That uh, search your heart thing? Mm -hmm. That's where the answer is? Mm -hmm. I guess people know that's just BS. You know, what I was reading about Egyptians the other day, and they, they did, thought the brain had no function. That's why they didn't preserve it when they did all their mummification. Oh, they like they, that's why they, uh, they just, stuffed just, it with hay they or just something. They emptied it out. There was just an, you know, something to fill your skull with, and oh, yeah, they all they pull, the motion was in your chest somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. They pull your brain out through your nose. Yeah. 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 Bad yeah. times. Bad times. Yeah. 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 I I, uh, I always thought that that would be a bad detail. The guy who was in charge of uh, getting brain. the brain out through the nose. 
It's like, and what they do with it? Just throw it away. Use, use it for a child's game, it's a so soccer-like game. <laughs> no, I don't know what they did with Set it. Set it to the farm animals. Yay! Yeah, they have to use a use a hook and uh, drag it out through your nose. Mm. Oh, could you do that, Drew? Good times. Could I do that? I think I could get mine out if I no, just blocked it, one nostril it, it, and it's, blew it's, real it's, hard. It's far more civilized these days, and we take a saw and take off the top of the head and pull it out. That is that way. what we that's do? How, yes, that's what we do now. Why do we do that? Autopsies? So, yeah, so we can look at it, you know, cross section it and, and go through it. Yeah, I just got the went to the uh, head body whole scan. body scan, and they did the the thing where they they slice every part of your body, you know, your liver. They look at it, mm -hmm. the brain. Well, unfortunately, they, they, that only shows anatomy. And anatomy right. is a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of what's important in terms of your m health and mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. functioning. So, Well, what, did, what are they looking for? What did it show? Well, I was surprised my lungs and liver were good. So I was like, you know, I don't need, really need, need to check anymore on that. <laughs> I figure I got another few more years. Well, again, no cancer is all they can tell you. Not right. good. Not right. good function. They don't tell you anything about they function. Can't, they, they can't uh, look at the heart or see they can look at They can look at evidence that suggests risk for heart right, disease. Right, right. But they can't... Again, this is a scan really for cancer or oh. vascular disease. Right, That's right. right. All right, so uh, you came out okay? I'm all good. How do you do it? Do you go into a thing like it's, it's MRI. a CAT scan? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, you, MRI? Like, like you complained about. Oh, does it make that god-awful noise? Yeah. That How long were you in No, there? the bing, bing, bong? No, no, no they I don't do that anymore. That. They don't no. bang around anymore. Oh, they don't. Huh? How long were you in there? I think it was about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe. Hmm. How much is it? It was about a grand. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, your health isn't worth a thousand. <laughs> Jake? Yeah. You're 19? You still got to get that colonoscopy, though. What yeah, they, they were pushing for that. You got to do that. That's the <laughs> way more important than a body scan. Drew, I'll just... give you one right now. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's when you were 50. Well, um, not if you really want not if you smoke cigarettes or drank, and if, and if you have family history, you start around 40. I've I'd, I'd been to two doctors, one for a physical and then one for the vasectomy, so I got two thumbs that week. Oh, but, really? You know, but, I'm, I'm fine. But again, that just means you don't have cancer now. In terms of screening for the things that can turn into cancer, you've right. got to actually go up there with a scope and pull them out. I just got so many things i got to do. <laughs> Catch up. All the yeah. damage I did, yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, it's all right. You're, you know what you are, uh, Nick? You're like a car that was driven hard, not really maintained. And mm -hmm. now it's time to put it up on the rack, take a good look <laughs> at See the what's bushings, going on. Yeah. change the fluids. <laughs> you got you have a little extra care now because mm -hmm. it was uh, not owned by grandmother and just driven to church on Sundays. Definitely not driven by a grandmother. Jake? Yeah. So what's up? Well, the other night, Dr. Drew was talking about um, circumcision and reduced risk of cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. And I'm not circumcised, and I'm yeah. wondering if it would be a good idea to get circumcised. Um, you know, I, I would not recommend... I wouldn't recommend that people who are not circumcised sort of run out and get circumcised, necessarily. Again, okay, this, was, this was just a, a, a study that actually was widely published. It was in USA Weekend, on the news and stuff, that, that is a reason to do it in childhood. It's a much more traumatic procedure in adulthood. If you have a reason to do it, you have a, you have a stenosis or something, then fine. There, there's more reason to do it. But they're yeah. saying they could reduce cervical cancer in this country, in the world, by like 40 percent. If everybody well, in the was world, but in this country, it means half of 1 percent. I but saved what, the article. Here it is. I read, what are they, I read uh, that. What, uh, you read the New England Journal of Medicine? Uh, no, no not she saw it on entertainment time, tonight. No. But listen, what, what, let, let me, let me, and Drew, don't, how dare you be condescending? I'm just Sorry, teasing. you read the New England Journal of Medicine, honey? On, on a set of prey watch, perhaps? I'm teasing. <laughs> Please, Drew, how dare you attack our guests? <laughs> you couldn't, I think uh, I did see it on entertainment tonight. I think you're right. Yeah. Here, here's, thank you. I watch this show too. I have no shame about that. I'm not a reader. That's fine with me. I don't have to brag like Dr. Drew, taking his little Scantron tests on the airplane, <laughs> reading his important magazines while I'm uh, drinking and uh, <laughs> complaining about uh, what happened to eight tracks. Mm. But, but and your mom. And my mom. Um, but uh, what the hell are we talking about, Drew? Oh, circumcision. circumcision. Yeah, yeah. Now, why would this give women uh, cervical cancer? Because it There's increases some... the risk of uh, the warts. The warts are spread more easily with guys who are uncircumcised? Yep. Reduce risk of genital H HPV infection in men. That's so it. so men have, uh, have mm -hmm. a harder 
time catching warts it's an when they're circumcised. They're saying it's an important cofactor in the natural history of HPV infection. All right, so that's warts. And may influence the risks of acquisition and transmission. Okay, so let me just uh, break this down in, uh, in English for our listeners. Let, let me just say, they also oh. point out, article just a second, that they reduce no, no penile cancer, reduce risk of HIV infection, and reduce risk of other STDs. Okay, so let, so. let, me, let me try to put, a, put some light on this. You get rid of that foreskin, right? Yep. And uh, you sort of essentially dry up and clean up that area at the end there, yeah. right? Yeah. And the area, that's the business end of the penis. That's the, that's business, the one yes. that's getting all that's the, the abuse. Working end, yeah. yeah, if it was a hammer, that'd be the, the head of the, the hammer, hammer, right? Or the claw. The, the claw of the yeah. hammer. Yes. Okay, and the balls would be, uh, would be the handle. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. All right. And so that area is, 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 is in there, and if you're uncircumcised, maybe it's a little bit moist and there's extra skin up there. And there's extra Whatever, area for yeah. stuff to latch on to, yeah, right? Uh, so now the guys who are uncircumcised have a slightly higher chance of getting warts. Right. Or of getting uh, HIV. Right. Is that what it was saying, That's too? That's what it's it saying, can, too. It can live in there. It's just, they don't really know what that is, but something about that makes it riskier. More likely that you're going to get warts, more likely you're going to transmit warts. Well, it, to me, to me, it almost seems like a physical thing. Like, like if you take something that's sort of smooth and doesn't have any edges on it and slide it in something and pull it out, it's going to have less stuff on it. And dry and not sort of, you know... Right, the, then something that's porous. sort of moist and has a few few ledges and, and they've, they've uh, always made a on big it. deal also about there being a thinner layer... Right, these guys, so maybe that's how it penetrates. Okay, more so they got a higher chance of getting the warts, and then they, then where the cervical cancer comes in is, the is, women. is that the the guys because they have a higher chance of having the warts, have a higher chance of passing it on to women, and they seem to produce more virus and transmit it more readily. Right, but still in this country, it's probably next to nothing. It's not 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 anything real. The study was done in this country. Yeah, but the study was done in this country about worldwide no, statistics. No, the, the, the data, the, the extrapolations were to worldwide. Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't have any numbers for this country. Yeah, I'll give them if you want them. Okay. Do you really want them? No. Yeah. We're going to take a break. <laughs> I, here's all enough, I'm saying. Enough about no, no, here, Okay, but here's all I'm saying. You, you give these, these stats out and people get a little nutty. This is, this is, this is next to nothing. It's it's not nothing. It's just next to nothing. Well, no, wait a minute. In terms what, of, the percentage of... Yeah. risk of cervical cancer? Yeah. Listen... People are worrying about secondhand smoke. This is a much, much more serious impact on people's I know, but the secondhand health. smoke whack jobs are, are their own sort of subset. I, I not, understand, not but, holes. but if that's going to be an important issue, this is well, a Well, just because issue. they're nuts doesn't mean we have to be nuts, too. Well, if that's the, the standard against... No, that's not the standard. Well, that's a crazy pack of nutty a-holes, <laughs> and so now we have to turn into a crazy All pack right, of okay. nutty a-holes All about, right, about this. Let's not be as bad as they are. I'll get you the numbers when we come back. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Nikki Six is here. Donna Dierico is here tonight. Donna is uh, here talking about um, it's a new stereo line that's uh, dedicated uh, to the ladies. It's uh, by JVC in uh, com- combination with Urban Decay Cosmetics, right? That's right. Um, we were in New York last week and uh, just unveiled this big billboard that I'm on in Times Time Square. Square. That's wow. cool. That's really cool. For uh, JVC and Urban Decay, for this line of car stereos, there's a big promotion where you can win one of those new VW Bugs or Beetles, whatever they are. Right. I think they're both. Yeah, uh, I, I can't ever figure out what to call them. I think them. you're right every time. <laughs> but, <laughs> no matter uh, what you say. <laughs> but, but you know, you know, it, was, uh, it's, it struck me that car stereos don't really get stolen anymore. Right. Or as much as they used to. What is that? Well, what it is is... There's a couple of things. A, they're cheap. Mm. I mean, this is sort right. of this is you can go into a, a a stereo store and for 99 bucks get something with a, a CD player and a detachable face. It would have cost you know, 1,200 to 150 bucks, presets. Right. Years so ago, yeah. so why rip something off and sell it for 50 bucks when a guy can buy it new for 89 bucks? It it kills the market. It's kind of sort of the argument of what would happen if they legalize drugs. Mm-hmm. It sort of it, it kills it. I mean, if you want to know really what how to get rid of crime, it's not really by putting the bars up or getting more security guards. It's just you just kill the market. Price. The price is gone. Price. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you you make uh, you make coke fifty cents a pound 
and <laughs> <laughs> There's not going to be any more shooting. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or not, but it definitely gets rid of the crime that surrounds it. I'll tell you that uh, right now. And I remember, and also cars come with nice stereos now, a lot of them that are integrated. The anti-theft And, and they have the anti-theft thing. Anti -theft yeah. thing, and it's like the Mercedes stereo is not going to fit in the BMW. And if you, and if you steal it, if some code rendered, thing goes off and it won't work. Right. Even if they hook it back up into a car. So right, far. right. And so there's all that. So it's just, it's not a business anymore. But I think we can all remember a day when you were pulling, there was, the, there was first thing, you'd pull out the whole the stereo. Whole thing, the whole I remember thing. that. There was a little handle thing. Yeah, you would there. actually yank out the entire stereo, yeah, which, which was sort of like walking around for your whole day <laughs> with a lunch pail, but as an adult, like a heavy electronics lunch pail. And then here's what inevitably would happen. The two things would happen. A, you'd be carrying it around and drop it somewhere, so you'd like <laughs> destroy your own stereo. B, you'd get it stolen while you're carrying it around, ironically. <laughs> you'd leave it on the table, the restaurant, you'd go take a leak could come back and be gone you'd leave it somewhere mm -hmm. or, the, or what 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 would always end up happening is is you those things were made to slide in and out about eh, 25 <laughs> times successfully before they started jamming and wedging so you'd start pulling on it and the whole dash would start moving i was at a certain point where my whole car moved backwards when i pulled on the thing and everything's and you try to put it back and it's like it doesn't play so you slide it out halfway and then you jam it back in there it just <laughs> People had to know that wasn't going to work. Yeah. And that cost you 500 600 bucks. Then they came with the detachable face. But it, you'd start getting lazy. You'd leave that in there. You'd start hiding the face. Then, then what you'd do, like some people would leave. they put a little decoy crappy AM in there. Put the good one in the glove box. <laughs> you think about the hassle. I spray painted my stereo because I didn't want it to get ripped off in the, in the late 80s. There's the one, the JVC one I saw that... When you turn it off, everything... Like, it, it all it, disappears. It, it, it all disappears. Like, it folds into itself, and just it's a black... Just a black, flat... Too, much, too cool, much work though. for a stereo, though. That's cool. Yeah. It's yeah. really just, cool to watch. Oh, it's I, really I, cool. I was turning yeah. it on and off and on and off and on. It was really, really... <laughs> Days of smoking <laughs> pot. Yeah, don't admit that, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> on yeah. and off, on and off. Mm. Yeah. If you saw it yourself, you'd do the same she, thing. So. In, in uh, yeah. 1985, Donna stared at a mood ring for 28 <laughs> hours straight once. Little known fact. Hey, back yes, to the girl. male circumcision and yes. cervical cancer cancer and warts and all that. I stand completely corrected. That study was not done in the United States. It was done in Brazil, Colombia, Thailand, Philippines, and Spain. Uh, well, let me say uh, two things. One, maybe the Jews got it right with the circumcision. Maybe that is a way to clean things up. But two, this is what I've been saying for the last few months. We've run out of uh, serious problems and uh, health Ep epidemics in this country, and now we got to go worldwide to get stats to scare us. So meaning when we're talking about AIDS now, we're talking about AIDS worldwide, right. and we're mainly focusing on Africa. Right. And see, it's hard to say, like, hey, we need your money, but don't worry, this we got it under control. Yeah. Like Magic Johnson has had this thing uh, since he was in uh, junior high, and he's still playing ball. That doesn't get you money. So I, we go, the, the, the highest rate, rate of homosexual is males. Males are getting, young heterosexual women are getting it. But what they're talking about is they're talking about Africa right. now. My favorite thing is that CNN runs the International Trachoma Society. One million cases of blindness every year. They're talking about chlamydia. They are. Chlamydia, yeah. How many cases of blindness in the, it, the United it, oh, States? Zero. Oh, no. Oh, oh. People That's would be my sued point. from here to eternity if it happened here. That's my point. So here's what I'm saying. From now on, I want to know if you're talking about this country or other countries so I know whether to tune out or not. Because there you start you talking about disease and you're talking about Mozambique or you're talking about some place in Central America... That's what I expect out of those countries. That's why they're them and we're us, goddammit. Thank Let's you. Let's heal some babies! Thank you. Chris? Yeah. You're uh, 16? Yeah. Um, what's up, guys? All right. Hey, man. What do you want? We're already tired of you. You're already tired of me. All right. Hang on. Mm. He had a horrible line. Joe. Joe. Hello. You got a question for Nikki? Yeah, I do. I want to know. I don't know if there's a rumor or what. But I heard that some of the guys from Motley Crue actually shot up alcohol, and I want to know if that's true. Yeah, it's true. What did they shoot up? Uh, they being me and Tommy. <laughs> you were one of them? <laughs> yeah. We were on a, uh, kind of on a cocaine run for a long time. We ran out of, uh, ran out of anything to come down from, 
or anything anything to shoot up or anything. And so me and Tommy decided that the way to come down, we we're in the tour bus out in the middle of the country, was to shoot up alcohol. Nasty. What mm. what kind of alcohol did you shoot up? Jack Daniels. Oh and how God. how did you do it? Like how did you know how much to put in there? You know, we just kind of filled the syringe and just did it. And and we were what, out of our minds. What did we it feel kids. like? Uh, you know what? I was instantly drunk. Oh really? Instantly drunk. But it was very bizarre. <laughs> you were pretty effed up when you did it though too, yeah, right? Yeah, I was like all jacked up on blow. But oh, I see. How did you not get an infection from that? You know, I don't know. Well, it's alcohol. Maybe, maybe nothing would live in our bodies in those days. You know? Wow. Well, so, well, that's how people get heart valve infections, injecting weird stuff. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about it, Drew? I mean, what is the difference between injecting? Well, it does and get into your blood booze. stream. Yeah, but you're injecting. I mean, your body absorbs the alcohol and everything else goes out. Right. Uh, you're but putting you, you're putting all oh, I, I don't right. know what the hell the is impurities. In there. Not only that, whatever bacteria. Uh, I mean, it's a, well, it's charcoal filter. I mean, if you, if you injected water into your system, it would be a disaster. It would. Yeah. All right. Well, look at him now. He just had the CAT scan. I'm all good. He's great. All good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> He's a poster boy for injecting foreign objects into his <laughs> materials into his bloodstream. So you injected yourself with yeah. alcohol, and you could immediately feel it. Immediately. Well, that makes sense. And that makes sense. Sure. And, and, and that that was kind of surreal. <laughs> and and I, I want to talk about this a little right. more because I'm curious about the amount too, and mm. and and if you felt. More and it, because see, I'm looking at ways to stretch out a fifth. Basically, I was just going to say yeah. you'd save a lot of money. Oh, is, absolutely. Well, I mean that—that's why uh, drug addicts start using syringes in the first place. Is it, it saves you know. Huh? Okay. Well, we're going to we're going right to talk there. about the economy side of uh, <laughs> drug and alcohol abuse <laughs> with uh, Nikki and Donna after this. Hey, everybody, Loveline. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Nikki Six is here tonight from hey. Motley Crew, and uh, Donna Dierico, his lovely wife, is here. You know, from uh, Baywatch and uh, also uh, one of the shows I enjoy, Battle Bots, but you probably didn't enjoy Battle Bots, did you, Donna? You know what? I, I, no. A lot of nerds <laughs> there. No, it, it my, when, I, when they initially um, offered it to me, I thought it sounded kind of dumb. Yeah. But, um, when I got there and it started, I have to admit, it was kind of cool. Got a little caught up in it, Kind of huh? got a little cool. It nerd was... Central, though, over there, yeah? I don't know. I, oh, well, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. There were Calling quite a few nerds. nerds. There were some yeah. nerds, but... Um, I, but went, I went down there. There were a lot of kids, too, and um, it was... I don't know. A lot, a lot of young, sh- young budding nerds there It was with their just kind of... I kind of got caught up in it, because these machines are just so cool, and the remote controls are like the size of... Remote controls? No, the oh, they're massive big. Yeah. remote controls with all these buttons. It was crazy. And the yeah. people some build these things. Something's for bound to go wrong eventually there because uh, those things have, like, you know, saw blades and pickaxes. Yeah. And, you know, they have these, uh, like, pneumatic canisters that uh, have, like, 2,000 tons of pressure <laughs> and stuff. And something's going to kick on and go through some but, guy's boot. But it just seems to me when I watch it, it could be just a little more violent. I was going to say, you I, know, kinda, I mean, it's I'm hoping. kind of violent, but not. I really? wanted to graduate into like being able to have, Rocket you know, shoot each other, or, yeah. you know, have projectile watts. Yeah, but <laughs> y- you know, you know, the thing is, is it 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 it, it strikes me, and a lot of people have that argument with with uh, battle bots, but it sort of ends up that way with everything that's violent about ninety five percent of the time. But you're waiting for that five percent, like for instance heavyweight boxing matches you say oh man this is going to be the battle to end all battles but it turns into a wrestling match and there's a lot of pushing and leaning and guys dragging guys across the ring but once in a while once out of every eh, 50 heavyweight fights or heavyweight championship so you, fights you wait there's Frazier Ali you know, I saw you the, know what I'm I saying saw and that's kind of what you're waiting for yeah. And if it was that way all the time, then maybe yeah, it wouldn't I be guess. as big a deal. And yeah. the same with the battle bots. Ninety percent of the matches are then pushing each other back and forth, and something goes wrong with one. But once in a while, Ziggo gets ahead of steam and sends some other middleweight just uh, sailing across the arena, and it's exciting. I saw the Foreman Ali fight. Uh, some guy was playing it on the, like a DVD, and next to me on a plane. That was an amazing fight too. I don't, didn't remember that one. 
Yeah, but that's... Uh, beat oh, the you crap out of each other. Oh, the foreman, the uh, first first The one? first foreman Ali fight, yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, I mean, that that's that's the point. That's why you remember those sort of yeah. hand out of the hundreds and hundreds and thousands of championship fights. You remember five or six of them. Mm. And and that's why they, they're up at the next level. And I thought to myself, and George Foreman's selling... Grillers. Cro- Crockpots, grillers, and Ali can't walk. Yeah. It's amazing. I know. I know, and yeah, it's the guy who won. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's really the crazy part. Uh, all right. Oh, and uh, Donna is uh, here tonight to uh, talk about uh, urban. Uh, what is it? Though? Urban JVC, that. urban decay, uh, car stereo. So, where in Times Square do we see it? Where do we look? You know what? It's um, just a big billboard, yeah. by the way. Yeah, it's big, big uh, billboard they just unveiled last week. And um, it's, it's, cr- it's, it's right across from MTV where yeah. they do TRL. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you, are you holding the stereo? ESPN too, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right, ESPN. It's, um, you know what, I'm on the billboard with a few other... Gr- there's a pro surfer, pro skateboarder, and a pro snowboarder on there. And then the creative director, Wendy, of um, Urban Decay, and Lisa Loeb. And oh. we're all on mm. there, and um, it's very pro woman. It's very women empowering, and all, all, all women, all women. Oh, it's okay. For women's car Lisa, right. Lisa, no, Lisa yeah. Loeb played that day, and I, I was pretty. Yeah, amazed. I was blown away. I mean, just She's a, really just good. Just a guitar and, and a yeah. microphone and her voice, and she was really good. Nice woman too. She yeah. is very She's, nice. She's yeah. very uh, witty and then hot in a kind of sleeper way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm into her. That's that's. <laughs> she'd be fine with me. <laughs> I, I don't think uh, my friend I mean, said I'd he'd be do with her. Yeah. He'd do her if she left the glasses on. Oh, you like like the librarian? Yeah, she got a little of that librarian thing going on, but she's really she's really hot and uh, she's talented. She's been dating uh, what's his name? Dweezil. Yeah, Dweezil for Zappa. three years. Yeah, I'm going to have him killed. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Natalie. Yeah. You're 13. Is there a what? You're 13 years old. Yeah, I am. What's up? Um, nothing. Um, well, I haven't gotten my period, and I'm about, like, a week and a half late. Mm-hmm. And I was just wondering what's, like, what's wrong. With did, you ha- did you have any sex? No, never. All right. So you're just late, but how uh, how regular have you been in the past? Um, very, like, it's been, like, not too late. I mean, it's, the latest it's been is, like, maybe three days at the most. And how late is it this time again? Week and a half. Week and a half, ten days, and you... Yeah. No sex. Year? I didn't get it for three months once. All right, so you have been late before, so you'll be late again. That's that's very common. Oh, okay. Very common. Are you on any medication? Um, well, right now I'm on a medication. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's for just for acne. And Minocycline? Minocin? Um, no, I don't think so. Not Accutane? No, it's not. No. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, last year when I didn't get it for three months, it was I was on Zoloft. All right, well, that, this all happens for sure. Common. You didn't have sex, so you can't be pregnant. Right, okay. All right. Thanks. Right. No. Jeez, it's just, uh... I got scared there. Like she got pregnant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we have 13-year-olds that are uh, active, but... Well, what's the no, what, what's lately the normal starting age for... 15 and a half. Is that for what it is? Period. Well, if getting a period, I think you meant for sexual activity. Getting no. a period is, is a little around 12. Oh. The, the pre The pre... Um, menarche symptoms come are coming on earlier, like seven, eight. Really, so pre-puberty is what's what's dropped down. Why? What which, is that? What that's are actually those signs? that's actually like breast bud development and uh, is, is how do, do hormones seven, start seven, kicking eight? in at that point? Not the wow. not the estrogen hormones. It's actually the adrenal hormones are kicking in earlier. And nobody seven, knows eight. They're not so Why is yet? that? It seems like it's earlier and earlier. All uh, it is. I mean, people. It, it's so crazy because Time Magazine reported it must be the estrogens and the chickens we're eating and this kind of stuff. All right. It's a non-estrogen mediated phenomenon. It's the adrenal glands mediating this whole thing. The age at which the period starts hasn't changed in 100 years. But the pre-period right. changes. Right. The stuff that comes, the hair growth and all that stuff. And sex is, is starting at 15 and a half. In this, con- in this country. And boys and girls? It's, it's a little younger for boys than girls. But it's, it's under 16, like for both. But for, for our callers, you can knock uh, eight years <laughs> off. Not <of> easily. <laughs> Except, <laughs> our guys to, start about seven and a half. As opposed to Holland, where it's like 17.8. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I wonder where we rank. We're the worst in industrialized countries. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You've it right up, huh? Yeah. yeah. Disappointing. But, uh... In what? France, it's 17. Is it? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but, and you, once, but once you know they what get they, started, they don't stop over there. But you know what? They, well, it's fine. But you I, know, I, don't get, I don't get it. Our, our oldest son's 11. He hates girls. 
How's how's it going to get to you know fourteen and just be ready to jump in the sack? Oh, like, that's that's a cool lot. Movie. Lot's going to happen in the yeah, next eleven set. to fourteen. Just pretty... think back, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. going at nine. You really? You're into girls at nine? Well, I thought it was in, but I was rolling around in the closet. Right. Yeah. But you you, you had that, and and oh, yeah. also guys. Guys vary quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are guys that we talk to that are 17 that sound like they're 13. Mm-hmm. And then there are yeah. guys we talk to who are 12, 13 that sound like Vietnam veterans. Yeah. So <laughs> right. you never know. But the, the late bloomers, are it's better for the parents and better for the kids. So yeah. Well, I, uh, theoretically, do what these other countries have are intact families. And that, that seems to be the oh. big ingredient. Mm. I mean, it, it couldn't be more open sexually than Holland. And yet they delay. And they have great family systems. There you go. Marie? Yes. You're 24? Hi. What's up? Um, I'm just having a problem where I'm startled really easily, like, even for the smallest things. Drew, you should move to Holland soon. Why? <laughs> Nothing for Your me kid, to do there. Kids are oh, old. yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 just idea. hook up an ISDN line over there. You'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Marie, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm just startled really easily, and and it's not like if somebody just sneaks up on me and tries to scare me, but... Just in normal situations, like even at work, if my boss comes up. Are you a tra- are you a are you a trauma survivor of some type? Scared the crap out of Donna, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of an exaggerated startle response, yeah. Are you a trauma survivor, Marie? Um. Well, I was physically abused when I was a child. Okay. Well, that's trauma. And do you ever dissociate? Do you go into periods of sort of where you freeze and you get, you get frightened to the point that you can't sort of do anything? No. No. I, I can still function. It's just... Um, I don't mean necessarily when you have a startle. I right, mean, do you oh. have experiences where you just kind of freeze and dissociate? Like when I'm interacting with people? Or interacting with people or in a situation that seems overwhelming. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that this is all sort of symptoms of post-traumatic stress reaction. M- maybe not necessarily meeting criteria for the true disorder, but this sort of fluctuation between excessive hyperexcitability and startle responses and then these freezing dissociative episodes a real characteristic of that so it's something uh, worth looking into having survived physical abuse is a really serious thing and oh wait, was there a lot of abuse why, why would this have started so much later though like, i mean i'm 24 now and no it's... who knows yeah it's hard to say uh. but it, it here it is and uh, that's what uh, that's why ptsd some is sometimes is some other stressor brings it out or some relationship falls or something you who get more abuse you your dad um my mother mostly my Ooh. dad some but mostly my mom my, what was her nationality one of those uh, oh, no ones that beats on kids white as white can be uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. okay and she did a lot of uh beating on you um yeah okay well a little therapy ought to cure that maybe about 15 years no five years five, five years five years, five years. Oh, five years every day mm-hmm. 15 okay. every other day <laughs> do you guys know of um a any therapy places that you can go to if you're sort of in between insurance? I'm going to be starting grad school soon, so it will kick in then. Well, the, the, wherever you're going to school, I'm sure we'll have mental health services. Right? Okay, so just wait. Till I'd then. wait till that, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, baby. Thanks. Yeah, good times, right? All right. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. All right, everyone's a mess. Good time. And, and, you know, who knows why all this stuff kicks in when it kicks in, but it, it's, always, it's always interesting to me, like when I see these, uh, these uh, biographies, mm. And he got like Donny Osmond up there. When and he, he has his panic attacks. And yeah, and he's talking about the guy. You know, he was born on stage. He's doing uh, he's doing three hundred gigs uh, a year at by the age of eight, and then somehow at age thirty nine, he has to go out on stage and uh, do uh, Jack and his amazing trench coat or what the hell show? Is colored he? cream coat. Morris and his multicolored gauchos. <laughs> what was that? Some something in his amazing technicolor, technicolor dream coat. Dream coat. J- 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 Jesus. The point is, is he's in his dressing room and he can't walk out on stage. He's he's petrified. You know, he's having a panic attack. Need you to go in there, and go. Hey, get out there. If I have hey. to wait here one second for you. Hey, Osmond. <laughs> hey, horse teeth. Hit the stage. <laughs> Let's rock. We got the ice capades coming in here on Sunday. We gotta we gotta clean up. No, I. What the hell is it, Joseph? Joseph, the amazing time color. Right, right. Here's That's my point. It. Why does this stuff kick in 35 years after the fact? You know, I mean, here's this guy on stage his entire life doing everything, everything. I mean, the guy's doing, the guy's doing a show with his sister when he's uh, on on you know prime time when he's 17. And usually, no that kind of thing is usually depression. 
Is that what it is? Yeah, that what, biology. When he couldn't go out? He's having panic attacks, but really the biology he's in is depression at that point. Right. But the, the, I guess the, the question is, is why now? And the answer is, who the hell knows? Yeah. But it's here. Yeah. So that, that lady that was on the phone just now, even though this stuff happened when she was a child, this reaction now when she's 24, that's still considered post-traumatic stress? Oh, yeah. That's one of the more... I mean, addicts, this is what we're dealing with all the time. That's most... I would dare say most of my addict patients now, that's what they're trying to treat. That's what they're looking to really get See, relief I, from. Kind of like, like Adam saying, I just always imagined post-traumatic stress syndrome to be what happens immediately after. Th there is that also. But that there is, uh, there is very, very commonly chronic post-traumatic stress in people that are trauma survivors from childhood. And, they, right. re and they fluctuate between flooding and flashbacks and dissociation and frozen and sort of detached. Hmm. And they go back and forth depending, and back and forth. And depending on what you do with your life, to just kind of stuff it down. They there. stuff it. I've dealt with that. It's a no, no big it. deal. And but the physiologic out. imprint is there. And if something, yeah. some stressors come along, you can't keep it under wraps sure. anymore. And power comes up. But yeah. in a way, it's it's like an injury. Like yeah. if you blow yeah. out your knee in, in high school playing football, That's then right. it's screwed up for a couple months. Then you're good for 25 years. Then now it you're, starts now you're hurting again. Now you're skiing and you're 50 and right. it doesn't work anymore. Now you can't do Joseph in the amazing <laughs> Technicolor <laughs> dream coat at age 50 that's when right. you're skiing. That's right. Is that what you're Thank saying? God that, I that's have a, no idea what precisely. you're talking about. That was a big that play. Broadway play. What the, the hell? That Debbie Gibson did, remember? Yeah, yeah, we had her in here. I, I don't know. I drew, maybe we shouldn't be admitting that we know yeah, these musicals. Say, yeah. It's a musical. Yeah. yeah, it's one of these lame musicals, the uh, Fagalus. <laughs> I barely heard of it, but uh, this one gay guy was talking about it <laughs> once, and I remember. It. Pat, it was cool the way we pretended not to remember the guy's name. Yeah. <laughs> Pat, you're 19. Yeah. What's up? Um. I don't believe it. <laughs> Whatever it is it's uh, What's up, Pat? I'm really attracted to married men. Mm-hmm. All right. And I have you do. always been that way? No, just recently. And, uh, yeah. No, I don't believe Pat. I just, I don't, it's, I don't, it's, I, she doesn't sound like she believes her. Yeah. You dating a married guy now, Pat? Yeah, but we're trying to kind of keep it low, because... He's actually a friend of the family's. Mm -hmm. and, like, he talks to my aunt a lot, and that's actually who I met him through. He, he touched your who? He, he's, he knows my... He flirts with my aunt. He, he, he what? Plays with your aunt? Flirts. Oh. Flirts. Oh, flirts. And that's who I met him through? Your right. aunt. Mm-hmm. How old is he? Uh... See, I, I just don't care. Uh, I just, I just, oh, listen, I don't care. Pat, I don't care. You got to get it together if you're going to be on this show. Whatever. And, uh, She's 19. Tara, mm. Damien. Oh, wow, 19. You, you got to be able to form a sentence. She also sounded younger don't than 19. On. All right. Okay. Keep I'll, it I'll just put her on hold for Keep a while. it moving. Keep it moving. All right. Matt? Yes, hi. You're 29. What's up? Oh, yes. Hi. Um, well... I married my wife in 93, and the first seven years were kind of rocky. Why? Were kinda... well, what was the problem? Well, you know, I guess I was a dick, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> you mean, that, well, that'll do it. What did you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm a car, car salesman. No, and so it's in your blood. I'm out a lot, you know, and stuff there, so, yeah. um, you know, but I think... You know, my wife's been hanging out with, uh, you know, some new lady friends, and, you know, they do the C-block thing when they go out. What's that? What? What's that mean? You well, know, you know, they kind of... Uh, Anderson just yelled, no. C-block is my ear. The, the, the rooster block. Oh. Just don't get him to say the word. Oh, he can't He can't say... Uh, yeah. Lock, C block. C-block, which is uh, the C... With wiener the, blocking, yeah. Wiener block. They go out and they... Oh, yeah. I I like it. It's kind of like throwing salt in the game. It's uh, making sure that they don't get. Oh, it. he left. He, he dropped off. Oh, he dropped off. All right. Okay. All right. That was getting good. Yeah. I learned something. Yeah, C block. I thought was something that had to do with a computer or yeah. a woman's prison. Yeah, I thought <laughs> it was it was cell block. <laughs> Brady. Yes. You're Adam, 21. How are you? What's up? Um, actually, I've got a few things. First of all, I'd love to tell you guys that I love your show. I listen to you guys every night faithfully. Thank wow. you. And I want to tell you guys I was in jail about a year ago for like 22 months, and I listen to you guys every night. I didn't miss one night. Yes. 
Do, do they give you a radio in yeah. there? Yeah, they suck, but... <laughs> really? You got a radio in jail? Yeah, a little, like, AM, FM radio. Good times. That's kind of cool. It's not bad. Was it that uh, JVC brand that's no. uh, well, powder? It or not, it was powder blue? Sony. No. Sony. Okay. Sony, okay. You, you can get it at Shopco for, like, eight ninety five. dollars <laughs> right. yeah, Brady's going to have his uh, picture up in Times Square with a bunch of other inmates. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the question, Brady? <laughs> they want to empower prisoners. All right, so uh, go ahead, Brady. One more thing. Um, while I was in there, I got sent over to Del Amo Hospital for, for sex addiction treatment. How'd you like it? Uh, it was... It was uh, entertaining and eye-opening, I think, would be the best word. Well, it's a good program. It's thought yeah, of. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, uh, Dr. Drew, I actually did talk to you when I was down there. I talked to you about uh, relationship things, and you told me, I remember one time you told me, and I still remember this to this day. That Wait a minute, how could, you, how could I have talked to you at Delamo? Well, I give you, like, a call on the radio. You've called on the radio before, huh? Yeah. And uh, you told me, like, the best the best way to treat relationships is you have to be, like, proactive in relationships. Yeah. And you said a beha your behavior is an effect of your condition, not of your condition. And I thought that was really cool. Is that what you said? That. And if it was okay. cool, Drew probably didn't say it. <laughs> Where'd they keep you over at Delamo? In C-Block? Uh, no, it was a lock. It was, I don't know where exactly where it was. It was in the back corner like i have really have but no let, let's okay. let, let, can we talk about this for one second though but because a lot of perpetrators there right what do you mean yeah, perpetrators people yeah. like yeah. like for instance there's this whole scandal about priests and sexual abuse right and, right. and people like that you you were amongst a lot of patients like that right brady yeah and there were also people there voluntarily that had come to stop before they got to the offending and right. that that's really the idea of a place like dilemma is before you break a law or harm somebody this is a condition that's treatable. Are you are you in some form of recovery now? Yeah, I am. I'm in uh, sex addiction therapy with a really good therapist. Fabulous. Up at the Utah State University. Excellent. Good. Yeah, so it is good. So what's the question? Well, I was wondering, um, is it possible to impregnate someone while they're on their menstruation cycle? Yes, it's possible. But it's not oh. probable. Not probable. Because, yeah, that's... I'm having, like, a hard time with that because from what I understand, like, the egg is not in there when that's happening. It's flushed out already. And yes, but your sperm, your sperm will live for three days up in the tubes, and in the meantime, another egg can get released. Is that what will happen? Yes. What, uh, what's the uh, blood? Does that do anything to your sperm? Mm, not really. Just kind of makes it into Thousand Island? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, is that a mess? That is such Little a mess. Loose, makes it, you know, it's bumping into things on its way up. But, but it gets by the blood. Bumping sure. into some blood clots. Sure. All right, so, so here's, here's the deal. If you blood have clots. sex with somebody when they're on their period, there's it, what it, I know you can't put a number on it. Much less risk. Much, much less we, likely. We always thought. Yeah. It's no. It's well, not possible. It's, it's, it's not a, I mean, that's what it's I was It's a safe told. bet. It's a safe yeah. bet. Again, it's sperm, like all odds are against sperm it. Sperm stays in the floating tube for three days, hanging out, just but hangs the, But out. then there's, not the, the, there's nothing, like, it's harder to adhere Attach, to the wall, yeah. right? Cause oh, no. Oh. No, no, no. Uh, uh, takes them then a few more days for once the egg hits the sperm to come down the tubes and get to the uterus. Your period's long over by then. So get a vasectomy. <laughs> yeah. That's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Nikki did. That's what I did. I. Uh, that's why I always play it safe. If I don't use a condom, give just a little shot of compressed air up there. Really, nice. just to <laughs> just to take the sperm out. Sure, why not? All right, we're going to take a little break. Uh, Donna Dierko is here tonight. Nikki Six is here tonight. We'll be right back after this. Buddy Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Nikki Six is here tonight. Donna Dierico is here tonight. Donna is here for the uh, Urban Decay uh, cosmetic line, which is uh, combined with uh, JVC and their uh, stereo line. Doing a uh, doing a stereo that is uh, geared for women. It's got uh, it comes in colors. It's got the uh, credit card uh, remote control and uh, reasonably priced. Very. It's a. Uh it's under two hundred dollars. I think it's one 
Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I say to Drew, Drew, do I say this to you every night on the ride home? What do I say to you? That you wish you had a remote control stereo that was chartreuse for under $100. No, no. but that was that was yeah. rare, Drew. Yeah. That was actually uh, mildly entertaining. <laughs> I like that. No, never been a better time to be poor. Oh, that's right. It's true. You say that all the time. Never, never has. I mean, when I was poor... If you bought a cheap car, it was a piece of ass. Yeah. I mean, there were the if if you had some money, you, you wanted to get a BMW or Mercedes, fine. Or you didn't have any money, you had to drive a Chevette or yeah. a Vega right. or something that people made fun of you for. Now, if you got nineteen grand, you got nineteen grand to spend on a car. Right. You get a Mini Cooper, you get a Golf GTI. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Things got like a six speed a navigation system right, in it. Right. It works. Mm-hmm. It kicks ass. It's got like Recaro seats and a Momo steering wheel and like eighteen inch rims on it. And it, it would blow away a Porsche from ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's got a hundred thousand mile warranty. You can have a uh, home stereo system, I mean, like home theater unit in there with like a you can get a big screen. I mean, a, like a 24-inch color TV was like 600 bucks when I was poor. Now they're free, Drew. <laughs> you understand they give them away? For car wash. Yeah, you get car a wash. car wash, you fill up with gas, you get a 24-inch color sh- TV. Now I mean, you get these like little miniature uh, home home theater systems with yeah. the small yeah. speakers. You get the whole thing, comes in one bucket. It's like uh, 400, yeah. 500 bucks. Right. There's never been a better time to be poor. A, a VCR is eighty nine bucks. It's got four heads and it, you know, it's got uh, all the all the remotes the and DVD's everything. DVDs only a hundred and some bucks. Yeah. Oh Cell yeah. Cell phones are cheap. Computers are yeah. cheap now. No, perfect time to be poor. I'm liking it. Yeah. Let's all you let's kids. Get, let's are, get poor. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> let's all put a hand in here and and commit to being poor. And when I see you guys next year. I want you to. I want you to bring your tax return in. I want you to be making less than you did the previous year. Oh, we can do that, Mike. Yeah, you're 33. Yes. What's up? Hey, not much. Uh, I, you were talking earlier when you were on the radio um, that you had a vasectomy. Nikki and, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, I'm going tomorrow to get mine. Oh yeah. Well, buy a bag of peas. A bag of peas. Oh, yeah. frozen peas. Frozen peas. <laughs> It's very uh, right country. on, right yeah. on the nuts. Yeah, huh? they kind of uh, mold. Can, yeah, a little better than I. I was doing the vasectomy shuffle up and down the hallway. Yeah, oh, I'm not looking forward to this at all. But uh, it's actually, doctor, it's actually not that bad. Well, that's what I was curious about because you know, the doctor they they always have their their viewpoint on it, and it always seems to be a little sugar coated. And yeah, uh, a mild discomfort is sort of code for yeah. you. <laughs> watch out. I mean, you know what? I had myself so worked up. I was. Really? Convinced this is the end of the world. Plus, it was right. a little harder for Nikki because they okay. they had to really go on the hunt for one of them and like go right. in a couple I had times. One of the one around. of the tubes was wow. Uh, what do you call that? It? Hiding. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> there's some terminology for it. I don't know, yeah. but he had to really hunt for it because if he didn't get it and it was and it was working, mm-hmm. so I I basically had five kids with just one tube. Oh, really? Sh- shooting just oh, wow. on the right. Wow, pretty good. Yeah. Okay, I've got two. I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know the worst part is the shot, and then after that, it's it's pretty much it's all good. And, and how how long you? Have? The, the smell of burning flesh is a little freaky, but yeah, they cauterize it. Yeah, huh? that that's that's how long well, how long are you sore for? They don't want to cauterize it because the fact that the smell is kind of nauseates the the patient, so they don't do that. Right. They just tie oh. them and cut them. All right, all right there, Mike. Oh. Well, good times, everybody. So just yeah. tie, what, they just leave it in a knot. <laughs> no. Then? Cut and tie it with a suture. Oh, okay. And it yeah. heals that way. Sweet dreams tonight, Mike. Sweet dreams, buddy. Good luck, dude. We'll uh, talk to uh, Jane, who's 33. Jane? Hi. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Good. What's up? Uh, I'm having a lot of problems dating lately. I haven't been in a relationship for about three years. Um, I suffer from paranoid schizophrenia, but I'm stable right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, how would this affect anyone that I begin to date? And if so, how should I uh, break it to them? Mm. To women, uh, them women don't, don't get this as much as men, do they? I believe that's true. I wonder why that is. I think we just have bigger brains, more can go wrong. Because <laughs> that's the way I always look at it. More advanced, you know, more stuff to go I wrong. I see, more than that. Uh, Jane? Yeah. I, I think uh, if you're stabilized and, uh, you know, you're taking your meds and, and all that stuff... I, you know, guys, I, most guys be okay with this. Yeah, it's more I, how you act. Right. If they're already attracted to you and uh, they're in, getting involved, I think it's reasonable to tell people that 
you're getting involved with that you have chronic conditions or you take medication, that kind of thing. But specifics, uh, I wouldn't get into until you really have established a relationship. Really? I think so. What are you doing? Are, are you able to work? Unless they ask. Then. Well, I'm trying to get back to working now. I haven't been working for a couple of years now. How come? Uh, I've been in and out of hospitals because of the anxiety and the panic attacks and the hallucinations. Mm -hmm. Do you hear voices? No, not anymore. I don't. You're insane. <laughs> you didn't just hear that? Scared Don again. She had a, yeah, another exaggerated startle reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to freak yeah. out. All right. All right, so uh, just get back and start dating. Okay. All right? All right, thanks. Yeah, Bye. you're all right. Okay. Hey, might, maybe you find a guy who's got the same condition. Well, I don't know if I want to find someone with the same condition, though. Oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want one of them uh, losers, right? Right. All right there, baby. <laughs> okay, thanks. I like that. Yeah, I like, uh, I like guys. I like when uh, fat guys uh, make fun of chicks for being fat. <laughs> Right. Like, <laughs> guys like uh, 180 pounds overweight, and it's like, yeah, she was okay, but her ass was a little big. It's like, hey, Lardo, <laughs> Jesus Christ, look at you. I like when people do that. It's a good, it's good, though, you know? Why? I don't know. There's something healthy about someone who's a schizophrenic not wanting to date someone who's schizophrenic because who the well, hell you know, wants it's, one it's, of them? It's, it's acknowledging how f difficult it is dealing with a chronic mental health issue, which is showing insight. Yeah. Rather than denying her own thing, it's it's showing insight that yeah, this is a tough thing to deal with. Yeah. and one in a relationship is enough. Now, see, for a guy, I'll tell you what's in it for a guy. Um, he can get residual sex after he breaks up with other women by saying that he dated somebody. Like like if you say you dated some chick and she was in a wheelchair <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, I think it would help when you were single. After that, you could get laid easier. You know what I mean? Like I, don't if, think that, I don't know if that would apply. I, for, but I Donna, what, I agree. I agree. What, I agree. You, yeah. you agree? Maybe the yeah. wheelchair totally. thing, yeah. What if I'm, I came? I don't know about, what if I came? Well, you said you were with a, a, someone who's a psycho. They, that's or what if, what if I, in L.A. Donna, what if I work this with you? <laughs> like, what if I said, like, what if we, you were just single, let's just say. And uh, let's just say, uh, Nikki, uh, like, you just blew up. Or something just, like, combusted. It happens. <laughs> right. It happens to guys in pants a lot. Or that injection of yeah, uh, yeah. Jack Daniels stuff, yeah, yeah. and right. then we're single, and I, I we meet up at some uh, party or something, and I, I I give you this rap. I tell you, listen, yeah, my my last girlfriend, she uh, cerebral palsy, and it was fine with me. A lot of people had a problem with it, but uh, I loved her, you know, and I didn't see the palsy. I, I saw the woman, and uh, we broke up, you know. Actually, it was mutual. And all that. You you you'd like me more, yeah. would you not? Okay, I admit it. Yeah, yeah. You ever used that before? No, but I'm going to start. It, so it sounds really worked out. <laughs> I know. I know. You know I totally That's the beauty right. of me. That's why I lie well. It's things sound worked out. You're totally <laughs> right. But if you changed that to a mental illness, I don't think I don't think that that same thing. I don't know. It doesn't apply the same way. I don't yeah. Think so. All right. Well, I won't do that. So, I'll keep it's it about at, physical. I'll, I'll keep it at the palsy. Well, it's about about impairment. Hmm. Okay. But I, I think it's more about impairment. You know about. Yeah. It's like if he can love her, right, and she's not perfect. What's the word he, I'm looking he can for? Love handicapped. Her. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So that's good. That works well. The handicapped one. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, going you know, it works good. good too. It's like, uh, yeah, a lot of people couldn't handle it because she had to w use those kind of crutches. You know, the ones with the yeah. thing that went on your forearm. You could have sex because her pelvic muscles she, she were too funny. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could have sex, but it was rare, and it's only when she wanted it, and I'd have to go down on her for hours. <laughs> An hour, and I was fine with that. And I was, I was fine with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then you oh turn yeah, into you'd, the you'd, get, you'd get laid that night. Yeah, a lot of guys. Oh, yeah. And it was. Hey, I got to admit, it, it was hard. And you know, a lot of guys wondered what I was doing, but I thought she was beautiful because I saw what was inside. Oh God, <laughs> that would so work. I was going to be all these guys in bars tonight out there. Are trying girls that, that easy <laughs> to figure out? Yeah, and oh, dupe well. like that. I yeah, but so. our, our listeners are going to be at bars going, she had uh, Carable Halsey, <laughs> par Parable uh, Talsey. She was a gimp gimpo. You little well, Jack. Yeah, she's like gimpo whatever. <laughs> anyway, I didn't do her that much. So can I have some? <laughs> <laughs> they, they would screw it up. <laughs> Kyle? Uh, yeah. You're 17? Yes. What's up? Um, okay. I've been going out with my girlfriend for a year and two months, and... Uh, I really fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. I've been with her forever. I told her that. And she ran um, away. 
What? And she ran away. No. What well, kind of... Uh, I went... I, her parents... I live with her because me and my parents aren't... Or my mom's not doing so good. So I moved in with her. I've been living there for like six months. And it's been great. And um, we had a really good relationship. Um, I had to go out of town for a week because my their, her parents were leaving and she like made out with another guy. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So well, What's up with your mom? Why do you have to get out of there? Um, she has a bipolar disease. Um, it's really hard to live with her. Okay. With that, I'm always yelling and stuff. Yeah, use cerebral palsy. It's better. You get light more. <laughs> yeah, and, well, I'm trying to get, it's been like a week, just, you know. Right. Why did your girlfriend make out with this other guy? How did you find out about it? I, uh, um, through friends. I find everything out. Okay. So, you, is, she, you, is she manic currently? Mad? Manic. Well, this isn't her. This is his. It's oh, the his mom's, mom's is, bipolar. Well, yeah. it's was she drinking? That's why he's been living were they, with. Were they drinking at a party or? Uh, yes, but she didn't really get that drunk. All right. Well, th- did she just kiss the guy? No, she, they made out and they did it a couple times. And, and I, I, I. Well, what's making her. out? That's that's kissing, uh, right? Well, yeah, she had a hickey on her neck. Okay. So, but and you're still living I, there? No, I. Yeah. Well, kind of. I'm with some other friends. So you're I'm, you're I bumming. Forgave her. I yeah. forgave her, but. Um, and she told her I'd have her back, but she just she says she doesn't want me anymore and everything. All right. Well, that's it. That's that. Well, and I'm trying to get over it, and uh, I want to, you know, like, have sex with other girls, and, you know. It, yeah. Except they, they, they women get together and have a meeting. Yeah. Except for you can't. Yeah, they have a meeting. They, they, they exclude guys that have just broken up with a girlfriend. You're, you're known as the damaged one. Yeah. So couldn't I use that, that story, though? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> cerebral palsy story? Yeah. You can <laughs> use that one. And that'll that'll like work on them. It, I guarantee it'll work. It'll Pra-practice work. Practice it in the mirror. Yeah. See, Donna, with, with for men, they're looking for impairment. Men, men are like a lion watching a herd of antelope go by. They, when the ones straggling at the end, <laughs> yeah, they, they pounce. Yeah. I can see the the mother being impaired working equally well. Yeah. For a guy. Yeah, that's good. That's good too. But you can't seem like you. You can't go. Oh, I'd like to strangle that bitch. That'll <laughs> that'll freak them out. Yeah, that would probably. Like she's my it. mom. I so love her. So when a guy breaks fear. up with a girl, and the guy starts going out, going out to clubs, can girls see that? Oh, they have a meeting. They've put his picture up. Because I I think yeah. they, I think they can see that. They're like that one. Stay weeks, away. Three weeks. Yeah. If she weeks. doesn't want him, I don't want him either. Yeah. Yeah. He has a stink of uh, rejection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's and, the and, way it works. And looking desperate. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's it. He he sticks out. Yeah, because yeah. he's just so gung ho to like find somebody. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Whereas whereas as a as a male, you're we, looking for that woman. Love to see yeah. a woman who has been knocked down a notch. Maybe maybe your self esteem isn't what it could be, the easy and it looks target. like easy pickings. Right. Yeah, I can slide in, and normally I got to work the six to seven and a half range, <laughs> but here's a nine with uh, who just recently got dumped. I might be able to slide up and get get a nine tonight. Yeah, that's the way it works. All right. Because you know why? We're pragmatic as guys. That's right. We're smarter. I say it all the time, right, Drew? You say it all the time. All right. We'll take a little break. Donna Dierko is here. Nikki Six is here. And we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Loveline. I'm Adam. Dr. Drew. Nikki Six, our guest tonight from Motley Crue and Donna Dierico, his uh, beautiful, beautiful wife from uh, Baywatch and uh, BattleBots is uh, here. Urban Decay and uh, JVC have uh, gotten together and uh, created a uh, line of uh, stereo units that are uh, specifically audio stereo, I mean uh, automobile stereo units that are uh, specifically designed for women. And uh, those will be in the stores when? Are they there now? Um, I haven't seen them yet. You can... uh Website? Actually, you can, you can, yes, they, they are. Um, Is there a website? Yeah, jvc.com, you can check it out. Yeah, and, and listen, uh, we got a lot of gay and listeners. You may be interested in some of this yourself. I mean, let's face it. And you know, the, the marketing campaign for these has just barely begun, and already there's, they're on back order. Because oh, really? Because they're so huge. Huh. They're, they haven't even promoted it, but they've been in the stores, and they've been selling out. Hmm. Well, maybe they should uh, should uh, launch one for uh, 
blacks, Asians, uh, Iranian. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just, I'm just running goods. here. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Guys over six foot who have fat fingers. <laughs> but the thing Stupid with these people put units, bigger knobs there. Yeah. <laughs> the thing with these uh, units is that, e like, if Nikki borrows my car or something, he wouldn't be in, like it, it. Doesn't look that girly. Right. Just there's just some cool colors to right. it that are a little less common. Because Urban Decay, they hooked up with Urban Decay because that um, cosmetic line is sort of hip and right. funky. They have the um, cool names for their things and, and uh, it's not so femme and, and soft no. and fuzzy, but it's um, it's just, it's, it's cool. It's not, yeah. it's not Elizabeth Taylor makeup. No. Yeah, well it seems to me that uh, the uh, sort of femininity thing has been uh, rethunk a little bit in this country and now it's a little more sort of, yeah, pro-athlete female uh, femininity yeah, that, than it that's, uh, that's was before and a little indeed. less uh, taffeta and chiffon. All right, uh, let's uh, see if we can help a few more people and speak to uh, Jason, who's 21. Jason? What's up? What's up? Um, I had a question for Nikki. Here he is. Hey. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Not bad. Um, actually, my question was, um, are you guys um, getting back together, you and Motley Crue? And the future here. Yeah, coming to stage. Blah, 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 next year but um you know i wouldn't hold my breath how's everyone getting along uh tommy's doing his thing doesn't get along with the singer singer's doing his thing doesn't get along with the, the drummer <laughs> <laughs> i kind of just don't really care <laughs> and my guitar player doesn't even like you know he doesn't ever leave his house so i don't think he knows what's going on <laughs> so we're just sort of in a holding pattern but you know what after 21 years it's a pretty cool thing to just be wow, in a pattern right long. now. Yes, yeah, it's been know, a long time. And, and, and you know, I love the band, but um, it was feeling like the last tour we did, like we were just, we were working just to work. We were playing the songs just to play the songs. And I think until everybody really wants to come back and make it a really cool thing, we should just take take our time and do other stuff. You know? Well, it seems to me, um, just, uh, just as a casual observer, that uh, Motley Crue has uh, not gone away and probably got a little bit bigger just over the last couple of years. My girlfriend was uh, reading the Motley Crue book mm. and uh, said she read it all in three days and uh, couldn't put it down and was uh, really into that. Uh, always see some stuff pop up on a VH1 or something like that, yeah. behind the music and all that uh, stuff. It, it was, uh, I mean... Would you say that Motley Crue was uh, bigger in the year 2001 than they were in 1995? Yeah. 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 That's kind of nice, right? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely starting to settle into that, you know, the history of the band. The music is, is holding up. And the, the book had a lot to do with it, too. I mean, yeah. When people read the book, they got to see multi dimensions of what the band was about not just musically in the partying but they got to see what people's lives were about and what drove them to get to do what they did in their lives yeah she loved it yeah it was and it's good and we're, we're making it into a movie we're working oh you are we're yeah. talking with paramount right now and mtv films and wow. uh, gonna go actually do the big screen movie interesting yeah well, so maybe with uh, you guys in it, or somebody playing no, you guys. No, yeah. Brad Pitt will be playing me. Okay. Yeah, and I'll be playing myself opposite Brad Pitt. <laughs> uh, no, that's yeah. negative. Now it'll be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll get a new guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's uh, take uh, one more and talk to so uh, for Brad Pitt, huh? Megan, who's uh -huh. uh, seventeen. You didn't know that, huh? Uh, yeah, didn't know that. Seems now. to be sort of universal. That yeah. Brad National thing. radio. Thank you, Megan. 17. Minus the beard, by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, Hello. Yeah, you're seventeen. Yeah, um, well, can I say hi to Nikki Six real fast and then ask yeah. my question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, hi. Hi, I think you're awesome. Your band is great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And you probably think that's weird coming from a 17-year-old, but my favorite band is Aerosmith, so I guess... Right on. Hey, mine too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You guys are awesome. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, you should, they should get Aerosmith on there for a guest. But anyway, I had a question right. about birth control. Done um, and done. Done and done. Go ahead. Okay, what's... 
What would, well, this is for Dr. Drew, but what's better, um, the pill or the shot? What would you say? Uh, the shot is more effective in preventing pregnancy. In fact, it's probably responsible for the drop in teen pregnancies we've seen in the last few years in this country. I actually, however, for patients that I'm taking care of, prefer the pill. If you, can, if you know that you're the kind of person that can remember to take it. The okay. Depo-Provera shot? Depo-Provera has a lot of side effects. Yeah, I it, used to take and it. And it bugs people. I and they, their sex it. drive goes out. They get depressed. They bleed all the time. Then they don't bleed at all. And yeah. Pe people are not that... A lot that, of complaints. Yeah, a lot of complaints about it. It's all, all generally kind of mild, but it's a great contraceptive. Okay. Yeah, because I, I have problems remembering to take pills. So I was thinking the shot... Well, then do the shot. Than... Then do the shot. There's, there's a shot now also with estrogen in it, so sometimes can take care What's of some the of the side they, effects. What's the one they were putting it under the skin? What's that? That's the oil plant. Oil plant. Yeah. There's, a, there's a patch now, too, you can wear once a week. That, Megan, be, be aware of that. There's a patch now. Yeah. So that's you know, that's another option for you. Uh, let me just say hi to uh, JP, who's been on hold for 53 minutes. Wow. Oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> we had some 70s and 80s up there. Yeah, thanks, guys, for taking my call. Good. Uh, I just want to talk to you before we uh, went to commercial and really lost you forever. Really you're 19. Uh, your girlfriend used your brother or her brother's uh, her, razor to shave? Her, her gay cousin. Her gay cousin. Yeah, and uh, she just found out today that her gay cousin and his boyfriend both have HIV. And uh, they've had it for about four years. Yeah. And she found out about this today. Mm, and how long ago was the, the razor used? A week ago. A week ago, she was taking well, a shower. Sorry? I, you know, these are all these sort of theoretic, is it possible kind of situations. Uh, of course, if she cut herself and he'd cut himself and, you know, insufficient, uh, a small enough period of time had passed that there could the virus survive. And then what do you do a week later? Are there prophylactic treatments a week after the fact? Not really. Well, what, but, I mean, you get the AIDS test, but that's not definitive for like six, six months. months yeah, right? yeah. She, she needs to go talk to an infectious disease doctor. What Somebody about may, the DNA AIDS test that uh, I was using when I was doing gay porn? Yeah, it's not a week, <laughs> but he may, he may be okay at a month or two with that one. But be that as it may, somebody may want to put her on some prophylactic treatment because it's clear that you can prevent transmission or that re means reduce may, the risk of transmission. You may have it, you may not have it, but you get on this stuff. Yeah. That would stop you from Somebody getting Somebody might do that, given this story. Yeah. But also, it's not likely not that likely. she got it this way. I would think not. Okay, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Well, that's the show. I want to thank Nikki Six for coming in here and the beautiful Donna Dierico for coming in here. And if you want more uh, information about this uh, Urban oh! Decay JVC cross... Uh, cross-pollinated project you can uh, just go on jvc.com and uh, check into it but uh, do it now because uh, these things are going fast mm. thanks guys it was good to see thank you thank you good to see you again and uh, we'll see you soon until next time this is adam crow for dr drew saying mahalo this has been love line the opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.